Hello and welcome to another episode of Citadel Guard Adventures. This is Beriathan of the Citadel Guard of Gondor. Garalip is saying hello as well. And we're back in Alin Veren in North Ithilien. So we've met some of these rangers led by Maendal and they have some Haradrim captives. Let us see what this is all about. The deeds of men and orc, fair or foul. Hail, Breathan. Your name precedes you among the captains of the rangers, my friend. When I saw your approach, I knew you could be no other. I am Mindal, and you have come at a peculiar time for me and my company. You see, we ambushed a party of Southrons traveling north through Ithilien, but rather than attacking, they threw down their weapons and knelt before us. Is it not a Southron's nature to die in battle? Is it not ours to slay our quarry? I know not what to make of this, but we must decide what is to be done with them soon. I do not know what to make of this, my friend. To what end have the Southrons surrendered? What drove them to such a decision? I have separated most of them among my men, and they are kept under guard. I sought to speak with them when first we arrived at Isle Inveren, but they remained silent. It seems that neither we nor the Southrons know how best to proceed. Perhaps they would think differently of you, Beriathan. I would ask you to speak to them, question their purpose in Ithilien, and see if we cannot discover what led to their surrender. Would you do this for us, my friend? Beriathan. A few of the Southrons have complaint of thirst. I do not doubt it, but I will not send my rangers away from their sides. We still know little of their purpose here, and I dare not offer them the chance to slay us while our numbers are thinned. Still, I would not deny a prisoner such care, even one as heated as a man of Harad. To the east of Isle Inveteran lies the source of this river, beneath a great waterfall. I would ask that you take their... these water skins and fill them there. When you return, offer them to the prisoners and let us hope it's enough to calm them for a time. If we are so fortunate, perhaps they may be more inclined to tell us of the enemy's plots in Ithilien. You approach Daugatum. He remains silent, but his gaze is fixed upon you. You ask him several carefully worded questions about his company's intent and the whereabouts of his cannon in North Ithilien. You offer him a moment to respond. Daugatum does not respond to your questions. His face is twisted in a mix of anger and disappointment, and it would seem that the decision to surrender was not his to make. However, he makes no attempt to free himself from his bonds and appears to have come to terms with his captain's choice. Yet, before you can turn back to Maendal, you hear the cracking of a nearby twig and the shifting of stone within the old paths. <laughs> Liars! A lot of them! Hold! Oh, was the rest? No, okay, Maendal is not willing to do that yet. What tidings do you carry this day? This does not bode well for this Haradrim, and surely they must know it. If any more of their kin come to their aid here, I fear we shall be forced to slay them to protect ourselves and our brethren. Were our circumstances different? But no, we can ill afford to take chances with men we have long known to be loyal to the enemy. For the moment, we must keep our heads and sights clear. I can sense my immense trust of the Southrons has already begun to splinter. After such a brazen attack, I must confess that I too share some of their apprehensions towards the prisoners. If we truly think ourselves the better men, we cannot give in to fear e so easily. The prisoners themselves have done nothing to suggest that they harbor the desire to break free, and they have heeded our commands without question. I would ask for your aid in calming my men. They are uneasy, and I do not wish them to do something ill-considered, even against such an old foe of our people. Speak to them, and I shall do the same. Come close, man, for I do not wish to alarm the rangers with what I must tell you. You see, I neglected to tell our captors of my companion and dear friend, Lokuashi. Tai Chat's voice shrinks to a whisper. Lokuashi is a momak of 16 years, and I cared for him after his mother was felled by disease in his earliest months. Lokuashi endured and grew mighty, whether in illness and battles alike, and he was to be brought into the war at long last. 
It was an honor to see him bury the brilliant armoring of my people, but those who rode him into battle did not make it far into these lands. Their company was ambushed at Kirit Negen, and there they were slain to the last, save for Loku Ashi. He cast off his armor in walled in anger and confusion and trampled all beneath him as he fled the mountain pass. I believe he lives still, Warden, but there remains no way for him to escape the lands of the rangers alive. Not without aid. The rangers will not trust our bond and they will slay him unless he departs from here. There is a pale root that grows among the foothills of the Black Mountains and it is known to my people as Maro Root. When cracked, it gives off a strong, sweet odor to which the Mumakil are drawn. I have seen it among the ruins here and in the foothills to the east. He fled far to the southwest of Kirit Negen, but I know no more of his flight. Once you have gathered the roots and discovered his whereabouts, crack the roots on most light and stones and lead him into the marshlands far to the northwest. I know not if he shall be left in peace there, but anywhere is safer for a Mumak than the lands of the rangers. So I have a very good question now that I've gotten this quest. Is this Mumak that we need to look for the same Mumak that Sam saw when he met the rangers of Ithilien? By the looks of it, from what they are saying, it seems that's the case. And I would very much enjoy it, if it were so. But I'm not sure, so I guess we'll find that truth later. I shall answer your questions, man. In truth, I know little of our purpose here, only that our war master bade us surrender to these forest men. You call them rangers, do you not? A strange name, I think. We have long been stationed in the land of Dargolard, but traveled southward to reach the battle on the field. Many of our number were slain at Kirithnegen by the rangers, and soon we were few. I learned of Gondor's victory from the rangers, but no little else of the battle. If this is our fate, I wish only to learn more of that great battle and then return home with my brethren. I would ask to hear more of the battle, but first, you should speak to my brethren of it. They are eager to hear of it. I don't know, if they were traveling south from Dagorlad, then maybe those are not the rangers, the, the Aradrim and the Mumak that Frodo and Sam saw with the rangers. A treasure cache, yeah, I knew it, there was another one in here. Let me grab this one really quick. I know you wish to understand why I ordered my men to stand down. I ordered our surrender because I know that our people cannot win this war. Not for ourselves and not for the Dark Lord. I speak not for the others among my kin and I do not claim falsely that the conflict between our peoples is ended. There have been many years of hatred between us and old wounds are not so easily suited. We have known the rangers to be unforgiving of their foes, but we still draw breath, at least for now. I have kept several banners of Farhadad bundled in my armor in. They are born into many battles, yes, but in my homeland they serve another purpose. You see, they are often used to mark areas of strife or of dangerous weather and winds. If you were to plant them along the southern roads of these lands, those that beheld them would be warned to turn back. In return, I will offer what I know of my people's plans in Dagorlad and of the Dark Lord's designs in the coming days of the war. I cannot promise that all will heed the warning banners, but if the captain of these rangers wishes to see fewer of my people in his lands, he should consider it. I will bring the message, but you gotta admit that sounds suspicious. Uh, how can the rangers trust that these banners don't signal something else and you're trying to cross them? I'm not sure this will, will cross their minds at some point. You know of the great battle? Tell me what happened, I beg you. What of the men of Harad? You tell Tai Chat of the Black Serpent's doom at the hands of Theoden King and of the three Mumakil who fell in their assault against the walls of Minas Tirith. So much death. If only we had abandoned the Dark Lord long ago. Krul is a master who sits behind black mountains and steep tower walls, feeling nothing as his soldiers are slaughtered. I no longer wish to be a part of this war. I wish only to return to Harad. I have heard all I can bear. Leave me, man. What know you of the battle on the fields of Gondor? You tell Daugatum of deeds great and small on the Pelennor fields. 
You speak of the death of Theren King and the triumph of their allies against the Witch King of Ankmar and of the sacrifices of great warriors before the enemy's forces. The ranger spoke of a wraith carved all in red who thought himself protected from weapons of war, yet he fled the field in fear. How can one who need not fear death be caught before the armies of Gondor? They cannot be so mighty. If the Dark Lord has such servants in his command, how lowly must we be in his sight? I hunger for a battle with the men of Gondor, and yet this is an ill-fated path for my people. We shall be used to the last, and what glory shall we have when all of us are gone? This battle must be ended, Baratheon, I must. It must, if ever we are to return home in peace. The Earth has reclaimed the deeds of men and orc, fair or foul. I do not know if I trust him, Baratheon. It could lessen the burden on the host of the West and leave it feeling clear of their people. If it is a ruse, they could lead the enemy's forces to our position. If this truly means that fewer Saturns will attempt to pass through Ithilien, I must allow it. Raise the banners as he asked, but begin the trail far to the south from Isle Inverin. Even if they follow it, they will not discover us, and if the Saturns poke through, they will turn about at the sight of them and have no need to continue northward. Be swift, my friend, for I desire to learn what the Southern knows of the enemy's designs in Ithilien. Be wary, my friends. Evil spoils these grounds. I shall offer them no quarter if their kinsmen attack us again, but I will not have my men give in to fear on mere suspicion. Thank you, Varyathan. Let us hope it does not come to that. Okay, back to Jubuja. And the tale of the battle. Let us tell him everything we know. I have waited patiently for you to tell them of the battle, and now I ask did you tell me what you told them. You tell Jubuja of the battle on the Pelennor Fields. You tell him of the shattering of the gates of Minas Tirith and of Grond. You tell him of the Witch King of Ankmar and of Gothmog's flight. You tell him of the Black Serpent's death and of Theoden King, who fell soon after. He listens attentively and bears a sad smile when your tale comes to an end. So my king and his sons are slain then. They would not have wished for death to find them any other way, man. Regardless of this war's outcome, much will change in my homeland. The lands of Harad are unforgiving but beautiful. If ever there is peace between our peoples or if you remain such a bold adventurer, I believe you would feel at home in the wilds of Harad and among the warm winds of our deserts and jungles. If there were time, I would tell you more of it, but I can sense these rangers no longer appreciate our conversation. Okay, what he's saying about Harad sounds intriguing to be sure. Uh, people have been asking for the game to go to Harad for a long time. And uh, who knows? Uh, I would assume the Dips also want to go to Harad and Kant and Rune and Nern and so many other places. So hopefully we'll get a chance of, of coming to Harad. Who knows? Maybe we even find these guys in Harad and they aid us in our adventures there, that would be great. That would be a great throwback. If that comes to pass, I just hope I I can't remember their names. You have come to the freshest waters of the river. I have I, I hope I can remember their names so that I can identify that throwback. And uh once again, the the Lotro team is so keen on these kind of details I wouldn't be surprised at all if that were the case. Man, now I'm even more excited about Hara, just thinking about this... <laughs> this kind of... of throwbacks and, and little details that they might be able to... to add in that place. That would be great. Truly. I would love to, to say it. Okay, we need a lot of this marrow root. Ah, okay, we also need to to gather the water. God, I forgot. I, I thought 
that text about the water was for the Maro route. God, I got confused. My bad. We'll need to go back to that river eventually to, to gather some water for the prisoners at some point. That's bound to happen. But for the time being, let us focus on this Maro route. We also need to travel a little bit south to plant some of these banners. I like Mindal's idea. Planting them. Far away from Island Baden, that way the rangers are not endangered. And I mean, even if this is if this is true, that would only mean that the Hanadrim would turn away even further to the south. But that's even better. Oh yeah. Very good cold air, Mindal. How many banners do we need to plant? Uh, six of them. Okay. Okay, ideal banner location. Here we have the first one. We keep moving south. What do we have here again? Ochnir. I don't know. I might give him another go for the extra rewards if I if I'm feeling up to it. If I find an easy way down. I don't know, we'll see. For the time being, let us just focus on these banners. Any other location here? Okay, there. Oh, with the school of Amumak. Cool banners, cool banners. I like that design. Another location, another like ideal banner location in here. The last one. Right over here. Now let us ride back to the river and the other quests. this area so far I mean from what it seems it, it seems Ethelian is one of those uh, tightly packed areas with lots of quests that you can advance simultaneously I'm getting the same feelings that I that I got during our times in Western Gondor actually and that also means enjoying this area much much more than I think I would uh, better than I remembered it. I I wasn't able to play North Ethelian or the Wastes or Mordor or uh, Strongholds of the North. There was a lot of content that I wasn't able to play at release. Uh, a couple a couple weeks before the release of Update 19. Not more than a month. My, my PC died. So I took a mandatory break from the game when that happened. Then update 19 released. 
an update 20 released and I I was up to date with what was happened with the game but not too interested in, in going back to it I just wanted to uh, repair my PC and uh, hopefully even upgrade it a little so that I could play Lotro on a higher quality then Mordor released that took me by surprise and seeing as how there was no signs of me fixing my PC, I just decided to grab my laptop and uh, play on the laptop. So that I did, up, I did update 19 and update 20 at that point. But I didn't have enough money to, to buy Mordor at the time. So I skipped that one. I mean, I was on and off or all of the game for a long time. I only, uh, I only purchased Mordor during February, February 2019. God, it was a long time. I was away from the game for a long time, but. After then, after I purchased Mordor, I was able to purchase all the other quest packs that I was missing. So I wasn't able to play update 22 or update 23 at release, but I did play update 24 at release. Uh, once again, when Minas Morgul uh, released, I was going through another tight spot financially. So I didn't purchase Minas Morgul at release. I, I actually played Minas Morgul during the pandemic. I I took advantage of the free quest period that Lotro had during the first half of 2020 and I played through the entirety of Minas Morgul then. And luckily, by that time, uh, my situation took a turn for the better. So I was able to do everything I wanted with the game. That's when I yeah, purchased Minas Morgul. I re to the game, I upgraded my PC, I started the channel. Uh, it was a great time, actually. It was a blessing, truly. And a privilege being able to do all that in the middle of the pandemic. I, I know for a lot of people it was a very difficult time. And maybe it still is because the consequences of it are still being felt. But as I was saying, for me, it was for me, it was yeah, it was just a blessing. I, I don't have any other words to describe that. Very thankful for everything that's happened that I was able to to actually find myself in a better spot of all things. Why even bother, man? I thought you were thirsty. I did not expect such treatment from these rangers. Yeah, you do appreciate it. Thank you. There is a heavy chest in here. Let me grab that one. Uh, not, not too much, but, you know, doesn't hurt to have some extra mats. An odd sword, this man. We have heard they never take prisoners, and yet, here we are. Thank you, man. This water suits my eels. Were it any but you among these men, I would not trust that the task had been finished. These rangers have treated us better than I believe they would, but I shall not trust them, not this day nor any day in the future. You have done me and my people a great favor and I shall not forget that. All I wish for now is the chance to return home with my men and leave this war behind. You have my thanks. I have no love for these men, but if bloodshed can be avoided this day, I shall do what I must. Alright, I'm already starting to like you. 
You seem like a very down to earth guy. Like, very centered about what's important right now. And I appreciate that, of course. Will you hear my plight? I hope it is enough to suit their thirst for a time, Baryathan. I do not wish to offer them more than we can spare our own, but water is plentiful in these lands. Let us hope such a gesture gives them pause should they wish to attack us yet. Okay. Uh, now we can technically... Um, I mean, this is a this is a tricky one. Because we, of course, need to move further to the north. We have not finished this quest line yet because we need to find Lokuashi, the Mumak, over here on this area. But that will also take us too close to Heneth Anun on one hand and to the fields of Kormalen on the other one. And we have quests on both sides. Uh... Okay, I don't remember exactly what Jar Gurthim said to us when we found him on the last episode. So, all that I remember now is, is we need to find him on the fields of Cormalin. Cormalin. Now, where does the stress fall on that word? I'm not sure. Anyway, uh... We gotta keep moving north. A ranger calls out to you and orders you to hold. Hold! Stay where you are, Warden, and tell me your purpose in Ithilien at once. You inform the ranger that you are a friend of Ambord, Mavlunk, and Damrod. You then tell him that you sought to join Thurindol at Henethanon, but became separated after passing through Aelin Veren. I see. You know many of my brethren, but a resourceful foe might also learn such things. You tell the ranger of the great battle on the Pelennor fields and of Faramir's rest in the houses of healing. Lord Faramir, live still, I... I suspect that you speak the truth. For to know that my captain heals even now brings me great, great relief, and no foe of the rangers would desire to give us even the faintest hope. Still, you must do as I say if you are to come to Heneth Anun. Sit near me and I will blindfold you. As long as you heed my words, I swear no harm will come to you. Only by hidden paths will I lead you to the refuge of Heneth Anun. Am I understood? Okay, it seems the time has come for us to go to Heneth Anun, so... Let us do that, then. Dornak pulls a cloth from his armor and begins to blindfold you. I mean, that's highly unnecessary. Uh, as a man of Gondor, I, I, I should be granted free passage, right? Uh, as a member of the Citadel Guard, we're on the same team. Why can't I see anything? Okay, there we go. Something evil stares this air. I hope you did not hear too many chuckles as we arrived. You informed Dornak that you heard a few but did not understand their context. I did not realize that so many of my brethren knew of you and your deeds. They think me a bit of a fool for taking such precautions with a friend of Amborn and Mavlung. They all looked so amused as I led you in. But how was I to know? There have been too many travelers in Ithilien as of late. I stand by my decision and I hope you can understand the wisdom in it. Welcome to Heneth Anun, the window of the sunset, and our last refuge. Okay, here we also have a, a, a new quest. The herbalist of Minas Tirith in Italy have continued need of you. So first of all, we're gonna get this milestone. Uh, the herbalist uh, quests basically are dailies that you can do for the rangers through Ithilien and the Wastes. You can only do four of them every any given day, but there are way more than that. Uh, for some extra rewards, uh, a deed as well with a mount. Uh, but God, that's a lot of work. So let's see if we can get some of those herbalism quests and start doing some of them. Now, you will see here that we are in Heneth Anon. This is not as bad as I remembered it, but this waterfall sounds really loud and you cannot hear the music. And on my on my other characters, I have this, this sound effect filtered because I thought it was too much. 
Uh, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it active this time or the ambience that it provides. Gonna think of it. Gonna think on that a little bit. It is good to see an ally in such dire hour. Thrindall stifles a laugh as you approach him. I'm sorry, Verathan. Dornak is a careful man, and that has always been a boon to our company. This time, it had the benefit of giving all of us a good laugh. In the end, we have reunited as I had hoped. You are here, and there is much to be done if we are to clear the way for the host of the West. This eh, medium armor looks really nice, in my opinion. It it works very well with this kind of outfit, so if you cannot get the Moore's armor once again, there are plenty of options, and these ones are some of them. Beriathan, it is good to have you among us once again, my friend. We have won a victory over the enemy, but the war is not yet over. Ithilien is in a precarious position, and stands as the only remaining barrier between the land of the enemy and Gondor. The northern reaches of Ithilien border Dagorlad, the dread wastes of the Dark Lord, and his forces rally there even now. If the host of the west seeks to reach the Black Gate and draw fully the ire of the enemy, they must first pass through Ithilien without great losses. My men and I know this land well, and we can teach you much of them on how to gain advantages over our foes. All we ask in return is that you offer your skill in driving back the forces of the enemy until the host of the west can reach Dagorlad. Mavlank has been eager to speak with you since you arrived, and I would also ask that you introduce yourself to Radrock and Laeglo. You have not yet met them, but they know well of your deeds in the Great Battle. Okay. Ah, Veriathan. I heard much of your discussion with Anbord, and he speaks true. We won a great victory, but it is certain that the hardest days of this war still lie ahead. The Dark Lord misjudged the strength of Gondor and Rohan, and it is unlikely that he will do so a second time. The forces he commands within Mordor and beyond are still many, many more than any defense could repel. I am glad to have you at my side once more, and I hope we can clear the way in time. Yeah, hopefully. We will purge these lands yet. Nice to meet you, Laglau. You are a skilled warden, it seems. You are not one of us, however. The rangers of Ithilien have held back the forces of Mordor for generations, and spared faraway lands the horrors of Mordor. I trust in my captain's judgment, and to that end I trust you. I just hope you do not mistake yourself for any of the brothers I have lost in the long fight against the Dark Lord. The aftermath of the great battle has changed much, yes, but our duties remain firm. We will protect Gondor and all of those loyal to the host of the West. You are on the front lines now, Briathan. Let us hope you are as skilled as they say. Yeah, you'll see. I think you will be pleasantly uh, surprised on that regard, my friend. You help bear my burden, friend. I have heard much of you, Beriathan, and I am honored to meet you at last. I have spent most of my years in Ithilien guarding its northern reaches alongside Lord Faramir, but so much has occurred in recent days. I have learned some of the enemy's plans in Ithilien and would be glad to share them with you if Ambord or Mavlin have not already asked something else of you. Uh, that would be nice. Okay, of course the sky is clearing. Um, and we can see a little bit of it in here, but since this is looking to the west, I think we actually need to wait till sunset to see the full beauty of this. To have one as storied as you among us is a boon to us all. These are bright days for Gondor and for us, in spite of any looming foes. My men are in good spirits, and hope has not yet faded, nor should it. If you are prepared, we must begin to act against the enemy's forces in Ithilien at once. Yeah, let us go. I have a favor to ask of you, my friend. Swift was our return to Henethanu at the battle's ending, and we had little time to tend the wounded. We are a hardy folk, but an injury is an injury no matter the man. A few of our numbers suffer wounds still, and I hope to heal them before the battle is rejoined. The lands of Ithilien are home to many useful herbs and flowers, and among them King's Foil, a mere weed in the eyes of many. I know of its restorative properties in the hands of a king, as well as those of an able healer. I have studied the King's Foil potions and salves you bear, 
and I believe that you might have the skill to heal my men. Search the foothills to the west, for King's Foil has often grown on the slopes beneath Henedanun. When you have gathered as much as you can bear, bring it to my men and heal them as best you can. Be swift, Periathan. <coughs> Being back in Henedanun has stirred my memories, Beriathan. Before you and I met in Osgiliath, our company was stationed here and Lord Faramir still held command. Through my years in Ithilien, I have encountered both beauty and terror, but surely nothing stranger than what we found one night. We discovered two halflings and their strange pet creature. I swear it is true. They spent time among our company and spoke much to Lord Faramir in harsh tones, but we came to know them as best we could. I have some tales to tell of their time here, but I did not overhear as much as Amborn in our initial encounter with them. If you wish to know how we came to find them, you should ask Angborn to tell you the tale. Yeah, let us hear it! You wish to know of the strange company that passed through Ithilien? In truth, I wish I had more to tell. A few among our neighbors spent time with them, but their stay was brief and their purposes were kept secret, except to Lord Faramir. I can't describe what I beheld during their time here, but you will have to speak with the others if you desire to know more. I shall not soon forget the night we encountered the halflings. We had caught sight of a fire in the distance and worried that orcs were drawing near to Henethanun. Faramir called us to arms and we set out at once. Do you still wish to hear my tale, Beriathan? Yes, of course I do. Do we have time? Yes. I want to hear it. Suspicious of an unquenched fire in the distance, Faramir led Anborn and the rangers to a campsite where they discovered neither man so here we have Faramir, Amborn, Damrod, Mavlung, and a lot of other unnamed rangers. And this kind of effect is, is really nice for these memories and, and tales and all. Let us see what we see. I discovered only a smoldering fire and none nearby to tend it. Here is the source of the smoke. Whoever or whatever made this fire will be night at hand. Search the ferns and trap it. Then we will learn what name of what manner of creature it is. And whatever it knows. Which area of Ithilien is this? Kirith Negan. Then, two small creatures leapt from the brush and raised their weapons against us. What do we have here? These are not orcs. Elves? They cannot be elves, for it is said that elves are, are fair to look upon. Hmm, not fair to look upon, indeed. When you are done, maybe you should say who you are and why you won't let two worried travelers get some rest. My name is Faramir, Captain of Gondor. Ithilin has no travelers, only servants of the Dark Tower or the White. We are servants of neither, and though Captain Faramir says otherwise, travelers we are. Then declare yourself and your errand at once. This is no time for riddles. Where is the third member of your company? The third member? You know the one. The skulking creature, some stealthy breed of orc, perhaps. He gave us a slip by some trickery. He is only a chance companion we met along the road, so I cannot answer for his whereabouts. But please spare him if you come upon him. He is only a rich gangrel creature under my care for a time. 
As for us, we are simply habits from the Shire, a land far from here. I am Frodo, son of Drogo, and here is Samwise, son of Hanfast, a habit in my service. We have walked far, our path taking us from Rivendell. We set out with seven companions, one fell in Moria, and the rest we left at Port Gallen. Our company consisted of an elf, a dwarf, two more of my kin, and two men. Aragorn the Ranger and Boromir who came from Minas Tirith. Boromir. You came with Boromir, son of Denethor? That is strange news indeed, if true. What had you to do with him? Speak swiftly. Is the riddle that Boromir brought to Rivendell known to you? Seek for the sword that was broken, in Miladris it dwells. Yes, those words are known to us. It is Aragorn who bears the sword that was broken. As for the halflings in the Rhyme, we are they. That is plain to see. But what is this Hildur's vein? That is hidden. We must learn more of this, but now is not the time or place. You were in great peril, and we would have been caught in a hard battle had we not come upon you when we did. Mavlung and Damrod will guard you for your own good and mine. If I survive, I will speak more with you upon my return. Farewell, whatever you think, I swear that we're friends to all foes of the one enemy. If my errand allowed it, I would wish to go with you and serve you in your cause. If we could hope to be of help to such doughty men. Let a light shine ever on your swords. Havelings are courteous folk indeed, whatever else they be. Farewell. I will not soon forget those halflings, for they were bold to give Faramir such cheek. <laughs> yeah, that was great. This is all I have to tell for now, my friend. After that, I went with Faramir to battle the Haradrim who attempted to pass through Ithilien, while Mavlon and Damrod guarded the halflings. When he has the time, Mavlon can surely tell you more of this story. Yeah, I would love to hear it. Ah, Veritha, this have been long days, and when first we met, such a tale was far from the front of my mind. The enemies designed for Southern Ithilien and Osgiliad were present matters, and ones that could have changed the fate of the battle on the Pelennor had they not been addressed. Even though it has only been but a few days, I swear I can still hear the halflings and their creatures carrying about Henethanun. Maldon studies your face and detects a hint of confusion. Ah, but perhaps I am skipping ahead. Ambor told you of our first encounter with the halflings, yes, but the day was not yet done. We were tasked with keeping the halflings under our protection, but our plans to ambush a company of Southrons soon well went awry and thrust us unwittingly into the skirmish. Yeah, I want to hear that one too. Are you ready to hear my tale? Yes, please. As he and the other rangers prepared a trap for the men of Harad at Kirith Negin, Mablung found his discussion with the halflings loudly interrupted. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna see that too. I spoke with the halflings for a time, and they asked much about me and my brethren. 
What are your names and where are you from? I am Mavlonk and my companion is Damrod. We are rangers of Ithilien. We are descended from a long line of folk who call this woods home and Stuart Denethor has charged us with its protection. We seldom roam this far within, but today we come to ambush the evil man from Harad. Curse the Haradrim. They are under the sway of the enemy. Alas, I fear that Gondor will fall. His strength and malice have grown great indeed, and there is little hope for Minas Tirith. But we do not sit idle. The Southrons march brazenly and heedlessly upon our own roads to swell the hosts of Mordor. They shall not pass and challenge, not while Faramir leads our host. His life seems charged, as if fate spares him for some greater end. It sounds like the smithing of a thousand blacksmiths all together. This is as near as I should like them to get. Yeah, that's Sam, of course. They are coming. They have broken through the trap and our captain pursues. No our trap had failed. For the south winds broke through. His arrows flew above us. Lokuachi. Yeah, it was the same Oliphant. I knew it. I just didn't remember the, the Harazman company coming from Dagorlat. I thought they were going to Dagorlat. Oh. Momak! Momak! May the Valar save us and turn his path. An Oliphant. So they exist, and I have gotten to see one. What a tale. Well, no one shall believe me if I tell them. If that's all over and done, I think I'll have a sleep. Sleep while you're able. If the captain returns, he will want to depart swiftly. The enemy will pursue us when the news reaches him. Go quietly when you leave. No need to disturb me. I doubt the captain will leave you unattended in the woods, Master Samwise, but we shall see. the halflings as so they slept and awaited my captain's return. That is all I have to tell, my friend. Oh yeah, so, Lokuashi is the same Oliphant. As I was saying, uh, the, the text, the quest said that they were coming from Dagorlat to Ithilien, but from what I remember in the books, they were coming from Ithilien to Dagorlat, and that's where they were ambushed. Um... So a, a, a little hazy in there, but bottom line is Lokuashi, the Oliphant that Sam and Frodo saw. So we got to know a lot more about it. Uh, 16 years old, his first battle it seems. And I also like how all these uh, tales from the Rangers have allowed us to see Faramir's and Frodo's encounter with many lines straight out from the books, literal quotes. That is all I recall, my friend. Upon Faramir's return, he led the halflings to Hinnethan with our company. By their appearances, it had been a lengthy time since their last supper, or a bath for that matter. Samwise calmed a bit in the refuge, but something seemed to talk at Frodo. 
Alas, Lord Faramir alone would know of such things, for he spent much time in private with the halflings beyond our hearing. There eventually came the question of how to deal with their elusive gangrel companion, but I shall leave that tale to Amborn. Do you wish to hear more of my tale? We returned from the battle with the Haradrim and Faramir spoke long with the halflings. He seemed convinced by their tale and agreed to invite them into the sanctuary of Henneth Anun. They spoke quietly as we walked through the woods, beyond our hearing, and more yet once we reached the cave. It was my duty to scout the way, and it was then I saw the gangrel creature. I looked it to be some wretch. I took it to be some wretch squirrel or shadow creature out of Mirkwood, but I did not shoot it, for Faramir does not permit the needless laying of beasts. I told Faramir what I saw, and the halflings listened with interest. Then I went out to guard. Do you wish to hear more, Bethan? Yeah, we. I think we have enough time for this one too. Anborn spied the Gengar creature last, and called upon his captain and the Huffman's to decide its fate. The Gengar creature had come to the Forbidden Pool, too close to anything. We are discovered. My boys are the ready, Captain. Shall we shoot, Master Baggins? No, no, I beg you, do not. So you know what this thing is, I take it? Come, tell me why we should spare it. In all of our long talks together, you have not spoken of the Gangrel Companion and I have let it be. He has now done worse than trespass and poach in Ithilien. He has dared to come to the very door of Henneth Anun. Why does he come beneath our very window, if it means his life is forfeit? He knows nothing of the ways of men, and I doubt he knows you are here. But also, it is likely that he has been drawn here by some mastering desire. The lure is stronger than his caution. Can he then know of your burden? Yes, he bore it himself for many years. It is precious to him. I have him in my sight, Captain. Do I shoot? It is death by law to come unbidden to the pool. Not yet, Dambor. This is a more difficult matter than it seems. Why should we spare him? Because he is hungry and wretched. And because Mithrander himself would have forbade it, as he forbade the elves to harm him. I do not understand why or how, but this creature is bound to my errand in some unforeseen way. He is our guide. Let me go down to him as quietly as I can. You may shoot me if I fail. Very well. I'm born. Lead Frodo to the bank. The Alfred told his connection with the creature and offered to lead him to us. Go quickly and be careful. And Zin archers are poised to shoot at any sign of trouble.
Ah, of course, Amber didn't hear what Proto told to Smeagol, so that's why there is no text on this part. Oh, very clever. Just knows that at some point they come to close. But why must we trust Master? What is the other habit? The root and cross one. So he's now within earside. Up ahead. Be good, Smeagol, and follow me this way. If you do not come, the Precious will be very angry. In front, now! What is it? Not a habit. Something is there. Nasty! Wicked! Trixie Master! Hold still now, or we'll stick you full of sharp arrows. Please be gentle with him. Smeagol, trust Master Smeagol. And blinded him with a hood, lest he discover the way to Hennethanun. And that is all I have to say on the matter, my friend. Thank you, Unborn. It's a very great tale. I oh, know, I'm sorry. I led the creature back to Hinethanon, but kept him under guard as Lord Faramir commanded. We did not yet know the halfling's purpose in Ithilien, but the gangrel creature had committed a serious offense in the eyes of the rangers, and he had to answer for it. I have but a small bit more to tell, Briathan. When you wish it, when you wish it, I shall start the ending of the tale with you. And I really want to hear the end of the tale. This is the last I saw of them until we parted ways in the forest. I can share what I remember, for these memories will not soon be forgotten. It was a strange discussion, and though I do not know the context, perhaps you can guess at it and relate the tale to the friends of the halflings. Faramir asked me to bring the gangrel creature to him so that he could question it, and so I did. I have more yet to tell. Are you ready to hear of it, Briathan? After returning to Hennethan, Faramir called for Anne to escort the gangrel creature to answer for coming to the Forbidden Pool without permission. At my lord's request, I goaded the gangrel creature forth to answer for his intrusion. Let us go, we've done nothing wrong. Nothing. You have come to fish in the Forbidden Pool, where it is death to come. We didn't know. We're only lost. Lost and hungry. We want the nice fishes for an empty belly. Come here and let me look at you. Do as he says, Smeagol. He will not hurt you. Trust me and all will be well. Your mind is full of locked doors with shutter windows behind them, but I judge that you speak the truth. You did not come here to present any threat to Gondor or Ithilien. What oath can you swear never to come back to this place or lead anyone hither? We swear said. Master knows, he will make our promise to the Master, and do to the Precious, never come again. This is a true promise, and if you cannot accept it, then you should carry on out your law, but there is no greater oath he can make. Then I give you to your Master for him to declare your fate however he will. Thank you. But my lord, you have not yet given your judgment concerning said master. I say that you are free to go wherever you will in Gondor, you and your charges. You are under my protection.
I place myself at your service, Captain Faramir. Thank you. Now, where does this creature plan to take you? I can answer if he will not. He took us to the Black Gate at my bidding, but we could not hope to enter there. Instead, we make for a path that is hidden supposedly near Minas Ithil. That is now called Minas Morgul. As you say, we will climb a high pass that leads through the mountains into the lands beyond. This pass, it is called Kiritungol, is it not? Answer! Is that not the name of the place you are approaching? No! Yes, yes! What is its name to us? Master tells us he must get in, so we take us him. There is no other way. I wonder if there is no other way. Who could know that for certain? Take him away, Amborn. Be gentle with him, but watch him very closely. I led the creature away. We rested. But never did my eyes leave him. That is all I recall of that night, my friend. Very interesting tale, to be sure. The night passed without incident. I was glad to be rid of the gangrel creature when Faramir led them away in the morning. I cannot fathom what could have passed between Captain Faramir and the halfling to make my lord grant them free passage in Ithilien, but all that I witnessed between them led me to believe that it was some strange important errand. I trust my lord's judgment. I wish I had better news to tell you of your friends. They seemed healed enough ere they departed, but as I said, they made for an evil place, the Pass of Kirithungul. Alright, it seems that's it for the moment regarding uh, the tales of the Hobbits, and that is truly all the time we have for today. So, thank you so much for watching today's episode of Citadel Guard Adventures. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you on the next one. Until then, my friends, stay safe, take care, good luck to you all, and I will see you later.